Without screws, nothing could be held together. Inside the movement, outside the case, everything would just fall apart. The screws hold everything in place, from the bridges to the case backs. Uh, even certain screws are used simply as weights on balance wheels for timing. We have screws that are so precise in their shape and size that we can use them for timing and balancing of the balance wheel. Uh, it's a pretty small part of a watch, but it's extremely important. Even a simple watch, you could have 15, 20 screws inside of the watch, and then you have exterior screws too all different designs. So how do we make these screws? And why are some screws $100? Other screws might be a few cents. In watchmaking, the traditional screw will have a slot, one slot. So the screws we work with are usually smaller than a grain of rice. So tiny that we're always working under magnification it's really pretty much impossible to inspect most of these screws and make sure you have all of the features you want on them just by looking at them without any assistance. Even a large screw is hard to pick up one screw and see what's going on with all the threads. So we usually don't know until the end if they're perfect. These are some of our screwdrivers that we use. This is actually a large screwdriver for a watch. And this one's in pretty bad shape. It needs to be hand filed to make sure everything's flat and parallel so that we don't damage our screws. This one's a special hex driver. So this would be for a screw that has a hexagon cut into the top. For us, that's our case back screw. For others, it could be inside of a movement. It could be uh, holding a bezel down, any number of things. We have screws that could be metric, uh, like an M1 would be a large screw. That's one millimeter. That's a tiny little thread. Uh, that's the diameter of the thread. These are such special screws that there's actually a special designation which here in the US, it's really hard to find people that even know that designation. It's called the uh, fine thread for metric. And instead of being a metric one, it would be a, an S1 instead of M1. It's kind of technical, but it's really only something that you see in the watchmaking world. Making those screws is quite a feat. Traditionally, it would have been done by hand on manual lathes. I'm not saying there's no electricity in that, but there's no computerized movements of the cutting tools. So what that means is we actually would have to set up a screw on a lathe, and as the material spins, we would be moving a dial to advance a cutting tool into the material to carve away what we don't want. That traditionally was the way all screws were made and many other components on watches. Since then, a lot has moved to computerized machines where we're actually using motors to move cutting tools exactly where we want them with uh, computer with coordinates that we put into the machine uh, that will advance these cutting tools exactly how far we want them to advance to remove a certain amount of material. 
uh, and move them in such a way to carve away the material that we don't want. And in the watch movement, we want very hard parts because they're meant to last. They need to be able to be screwed in, screwed out, and, and actually hold down. You don't want the threads to, to warp because this should last for hundreds of years and be serviced every five years. So if that screw is coming in and out of the watch, you don't wanna to have to replace it every single time. So we make it as hard as possible. And it's with the aid of computer controlled machines that we can cut those screws using very hard cutting tools. We use carbide. So we can actually start with a hardened steel using carbide cutting tools. The machines are also much more rigid. They're the size of cars. So they're really overbuilt uh, for making these tiny little precision components. Things like screws that go inside the movement or even these large screws, large for watchmakers, case back screws. To make a screw with a manual machine, it would be a number of hours just to cut a screw to the level that a watchmaker desires. Then the hand finishing and the, the heat treatment and everything could take some more time. To do the same screw on a CNC machine, it's gonna take much longer to set up everything for repeatability, but once it's set up, the first screw you made took you a whole week to set it up maybe. The second screw is just 30 seconds. The third screw is another 30 seconds. So if something's not quite right, you can change it a little bit and the next screw is very quick to be produced. For CNC cut screws, you'll start with a computer drawing. From there, you have to select the right tools. So the right tools are selected for all the different cuts that are made on a screw. From the threading, the turning, the slotting of the screw head, the finishing, cutting off the screw, all of these require a special tool. So those tools are selected and then a program is written to move all of those tools where they need to go to get a relatively perfect part. Once you have that program, you can set it up on a CNC machine, all the tools where you want them to be, and you can run it and test it. Make sure that all the tools move where they're supposed to move. And when you tell a tool to move a certain distance, it does. So we make all these little adjustments, fine tune everything, get everything cutting exactly the way we want it so that the screw is within tolerance. And the way we figure out if a screw is within tolerance is by measuring it. And you can measure it with calipers. Uh, you can measure it with micrometers. You can also test the threads with different thread gauges. We can also put it under a microscope and we can look at the surface finish and we can measure uh, between threads, all of these things. We can measure the width of the slot in the screw and that we can do without even touching the screw, which is wonderful. Uh, there are microscopes now that you can put a part underneath them and it measures everything you want it to just with the press of a button and tells you exactly how outside of tolerance you are. Hopefully not too far. With a manual setup, if you have a problem with the screw you made, you have to start from the beginning completely. Uh, there's no, no saved information because there's no memory really. The memory is up here in your own head. So you have to go through every step again to produce the next screw. And there's no efficiency in that. So things have changed a little bit, but in the end, we're still making tiny little screws uh, with the finest finishing and all the polishing that's necessary, not only to make the screw last a long time, but to make it beautiful as well. And that's the difference between a watchmaking screw and all the other screws that might end up in the automotive industry or even medical and dental and aerospace and things like this. Some of them might be focused on finishes but not nearly as much as watchmakers.
Even the tiniest little parts inside of a watch, such as the screws, still demand the same amount of attention as other parts. So next time you're examining a watch movement, take a look at the screws and think about all the effort that went into producing just that little minor part or what you may have thought was minor.